and welcome to this video where we're going to take a look at the initial INAV setup for a flying wing. Now it's a very simple process, it doesn't take very long. Uh, you're going to need a flight controller that can run INAV firmware, in this case I'm using a Matek F405 WMN. And I've already got two of the basic uh, peripherals attached. I've got my receiver so I can bind to my radio and I've got the GPS and compass unit so that we can set that up and make sure that it's talking with the flight controller as well. Now, you can see here that I've got all of these things sort of temporarily set up. I've got the flight controller, the receiver, and uh, the GPS unit just temporarily mounted on this piece of wood. That's so that when we get to the accelerometer and calibration phrase, um, it's really much easier to do this way than actually having it inside the model. Now we're also going to need our radio like this which will have also a model set up that we want to bind to this receiver and flight controller. And then for this we're going to use the latest stable release of INAV configurator and INAV firmware which is version 6. It just came out a few days ago. Um, so let's just jump right into these steps here really straightforward we'll just connect to INAV first part is we'll go to the ports page and make sure that the different peripherals are registered in there and are connecting properly we'll go to the receiver page and make sure that the receiver and the flight controller not sorry the flight controller the uh, the radio are bound and talking to each other and because we're using express LRS in this that should be a pretty straightforward process then we'll go to the GPS page, turn on the GPS and make sure that it is communicating, calibrate the accelerometer and do some really basic sensor setup in the configuration tab. And that's all that we will need to do. So let's take a look at that. First of all, I'm going to plug in the flight controller. You can see that it activates Launch there and we'll head on over to INAV and connect in. Now the very first step that we need to do is just go to the ports tab here and in the ports tab we need to set up the receiver which is a serial receiver in this case it's Express LRS which is serial and uses Crossfire and that is connected to UART2. So UART2 has a serial receiver so we make sure that's enabled. We have a GPS I know that that is connected to UART4. So here's UART4 and a GPS is a sensor. So we'll come over to the sensors area for, for uh, UART4 and turn it on. And even though I don't have it connected right now, I know that I will connect a VTX and smart audio to UART5. And that is considered a peripheral, and so I'm actually going to enable that right now, even though I don't have that physically connected to the flight controller at this time. And we'll just save and reboot. And as it goes through that process, you can get your radio, turn it on, because we're going to go down to the receiver tab now, and make sure that the receiver and the radio are talking to each other and if we take a look you can see that already they are connected and talking to each other because it's bound with <coughs> pardon me with express lrs binding phrase on the radio and the same binding phrase on the receiver will automatically bind to each other now if you're having any issues at all just make sure that your serial receiver type or sorry, your receiver type is set to serial, and that the provider, in this case, we're using Express LRS, which uses Crossfire as the protocol. And that should take care of most things. If it still doesn't, make sure you save and reboot, and then physically disconnect and reconnect your flight controller as a power cycle, and it should take care of it. All right, we've done that now. Let's come down and take care of the GPS. And all we need to do here is turn on GPS for navigation and telemetry. And from the protocol, 
choose uBlocks 7 or higher if it's available. Okay, and save and reboot. That's all you need to do. And if everything was connected properly, what we should see is after rebooting and reconnecting, that in the top here, we should see a new sensor show up here in just a minute. Um, that is the GPS. And there it showed up, and currently it's red because it's still trying to figure out its communication, and now it's blue, which tells us it's talking happily with the flight controller. From there, the next step that we need to do is simply come up to calibration. And so we'll do that. And unlike Betaflight and some other kinds of flight control software, um, this calibration for the accelerometer is a slightly different process. We need to put the flight controller into each of these six different positions, hold it there in a steady position, and wait for the flight controller to register that and, and take it in. And so that's why I've got it mounted on the wood like this. It is much, much easier to um, maneuver this around than a large model. So that's what we're going to do. So to do it, we'll click on the calibrate accelerometer and it says place it in any position of those six and then hit calibrate accelerometer again and then just move through each of the six positions. So that's what we will do. Now it's already in the flat position here like it normally would so we'll just choose that one. We'll calibrate, processes it, and then registers it. Now I'll just go through each of the six different positions in turn and as you do this, if at any point, just like it happened right there, the step one disappeared, don't worry about it. Just simply go back to that particular position and calibrate again. Then you just simply need to go through all of those positions and hitting calibrate at each point. And as you can see, I hope that by using this little piece of wood, it is much, much, much simpler to get into these six different positions and hold them there than if we were using a model that was a meter long. And we'll just do the one more here. And as you can see now, it says that the process is finished. And we'll just save and reboot. Now we're getting really close to everything that we need to accomplish here with this initial setup. The last thing that we're going to do is just come over here to the configuration tab and do some really, really basic things here. We can see at the top that we've got a bunch of our sensors already active and, and recognized. Now I do actually have a compass on this thing and if I was going to use it, I would be activating the magnetometer. And you just simply do that by choosing auto and rebooting and just like we did with the GPS the system will recognize it and uh, let you know that it's there and communicating properly. I'm not using the compass for this particular build so I'm just going to leave that to turned off. Moving down the board or down the board here down the page here we'll get to this place with other features and there are just a few that we would like to set up. We would like to have the stop motors on low throttle. We want GPS and telemetry turned on. I would like to have black box flight data so that later I can take a look and see what's happened with, um, with the flight recordings. I'd like to have an on-screen display for when I have my video system set up. Permanently enable air mode and permanently enable launch mode for a fixed wing. We're also going to continuously trim servos on a fixed wing. Okay, so all of those that we wanted are set. We'll come back up here to the top and we'll take also a look at this voltage and current sensors. Now, these are specific to every individual flight controller. So you need to look it up for your particular brand and model. But in my case with this Matek WMN, 2100 is the correct voltage scale and 150 is the correct um, current meter scale. And so those are fine. 
if they are different for your flight controller, you would need to set those as, a, as is appropriate for yours. And that is the last thing that we need to do on here, except save and reboot to complete the initial setup. Now we are not by any means completely ready to fly with this. There are still quite a few other things that need to be set up within iNav for sure. But for the initial setup, calibrating the accelerometer and setting up the other sort of peripheral devices, this was a really simple, easy way to do it.